Bonjour, bonsoir. C'est Planet Lee, une autre fois. And today we have, tonight we have some esteemed guests. I think you can see it in the lower thirds. Um, Kate and Marco Rosso, painters, visual artists. And the show is a tribute to the painter and silkscreen artist, Michael Roman, who uh, showed a lot here in San Francisco, mainly at um, uh, Mission Cultural Center. And uh, his work is now on display at Kate Rosso's uh, bookstores, dog-eared books, and alley cat books here in San Francisco. So without further ado, because we have a lot to talk about, there's a lot going on this weekend that's uh, open studios for artists across San Francisco, and they really want you to come out and see their work. So we'll celebrate Michael Roman, an artist who has passed, um, whom we, we find a, a consummate artist who's always working, and um, our current guests who will be showing this weekend. So let's start with Kate and Marco. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. How are Hi. you, Marco? How are you? Hi. Good. Thank you. I'm so glad you came. So happy you're here. Thanks for having us. And uh, yeah, sure. Uh, are you you both have your, your postcards. We do. For us. We're excited. <laughs> oh, cool. We're excited. We're not actually at Hunter's Point this weekend. We're at a new place, oh. Studio 2751 23rd Street in oh. the Mission. But we often show at Hunter's Point. Oh, okay. But that was a couple weekends ago. I forgot to tell you that. Oh, uh-oh. Well, I could probably try and change it. Um, or we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Well, first we're going to talk about Michael. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so we have an image already that we can talk about. This is on display at Alley Cat. Yes, it is. Um, that is displayed in the original size. And Michael, as many people know, was a remarkable artist, screen printer, stencil artist, many, many things. Um, and he passed almost three years ago. Is it three years? Oh. Almost three years ago. He was 60 years old. And um, he lived life to its fullest. He had a lot of fun. He knew almost everybody there is to know. And, um, mm -hmm. and that happened. Yeah. And then... Um, what else to say? Michael has left an indelible footprint on San Francisco and in New York and in Germany and in Oaxaca. He did a lot of things in Oaxaca oh, as nice. well. He went there almost every year for the Day of the Dead, actually. Oh, how cool. And he would go for a couple of weeks. And I can't tell you how many people I've met on the street who are wearing a T-shirt. And I say, where did you get it? And they say, oh, I bought it off this guy on the street in Oaxaca who was selling T-shirts. And, of course, they bought it for 10 bucks or 20 bucks, and it's got holes in it now, and they're sad that they're worried it's going to wear out. But anyways, Michael was a character larger than life, and I'm delighted to be showing his artwork. Yes, and you own his estate, right? I do. He left, he left his studio to me and all the artwork, and I am slowly recreating his screens and his artwork. And I am honored to be the person to be continuing to let people have his artwork, take it home. Yeah. So uh, right now, it's on display at um, your bookstores? Uh-huh. I have three bookstores right now. Uh, Dog-eared books on Valencia. There are prints for sale, smaller prints, reductions. And then uh, Dog-eared Castro has a full-on show, and Alley Cat has a full-on show. And on Halloween, we are doing an auction, which is going to be a lot of fun because mm -hmm. people are consigning original artwork, and God knows what's going to happen. And we're going to have a costume contest, and it's fun. Paul Flores is going to do, he's going to be the auctioneer, Okay. and we'll see what happens. And I think Michael would be very pleased about that turn of events. Nice. I feel like I am trying to do my best by him as he would have wanted. He gave me very clear instructions about what to do with his artwork, and he said to do good. So that's what I'm trying to do. That's excellent. That's so nice. Thank you. Cool. So we're just going to look at a few more pieces, and then um, 
We'll look at a few more pieces and then talk about Kate and Marco's work, okay? Because you can go down to Dog Eared Books on Castro or 24th Street. Uh, no, Alley sorry, Cat? Valencia. Valencia yeah. and um, Alley Cat on 24th. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to look at another piece. Um, yeah, he. I like his collaged works mm -hmm. the best. Mm -hmm. It's... Um, they always have the most depth, and, um, and I love his colors. So this is a stencil. The Virgin is a stencil that he cut and then he turned into a screen print, a screen, and then he printed it. And I have to say, there was a time I was sitting in the church in Whittier with him and his mother, the church he grew up going to, and I looked up and there that Virgin was, and I thought, oh, he was really influenced by the iconography he saw as a yes. child. Yes. And anyways, when I see this, I think, oh, there it is. Yes, yeah, I saw it in his work and I really liked that image of the Virgin because um, uh, when I was um, showing myself, someone in um, the mission gave me a picture of the Virgin to, to paint from that. Mm. You know, it's just really, it's such a, um, huge icon in, in Mexico, no, Marco? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it's, uh, especially in, uh, uh, I mean, all over, but uh, we uh, celebrate uh, her birthday on December 12th. So, right, yeah. and uh, it's a huge, huge celebration. Millions of people come to what we call the Basilica. Huh? Oh. And uh, he, she represents uh, uh, basically the people, huh? the lower, uh, mostly indigenous people. And then she's become a symbol of justice among Mexicans. Huh? Now the Chicanos use, use uh, the symbol as, uh, as part of the icons, like hair and like uh, Zapata that comes from the Mexican history, you know? mm -hmm. they transform it and show it. Luchador. Mm -hmm. And the Lucha Libre too. Yeah. But the Luchador is, uh, is the, fi the fighter. Yes, the wrestler. The, the wrestler. But and it's this mashup of imagery mm -hmm. that the version is, is prominent. Yeah, you don't really see her with the Luchador though. Uh, Michael did. <laughs> really? <laughs> all kinds uh, of everything. Some? Yeah, he mixed it all up. Yeah. Well, but that's, that's more of a Chicano. I think what Marco was saying, it's more of a Chicano influence. That's why you have to go and see this work. Because we all know that Michael was a bit on the, everybody says crazy. Well, we're all crazy in Planet Glee's world. And it's like, yeah, I mean, how, what can, it, can you put like the, the Virgin with, uh, you know, a wrestler. Well, if Michael did it, I'm not surprised. I am not so familiar with his work, as Kate is is so lucky to um, be able to to have it mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. So it's great. Um, I just want to show a couple more, and then we'll we'll go to oopsie. I'd like um, to say it's not like I have it all. Michael made so much work, and it's everywhere. And that was one of the beauties. He gave his artwork away. He sold it very inexpensively, and I always think of it. It's sort of like a dandelion of the seeds scattering everywhere. And I think a lot of people feel very blessed to have pieces. Yeah. You know. It, um, so I have a question for Marco. Do you think that um, Mexico, in terms of its, um, you know, painters and its great artists, they don't really sell their work for a lot of money. You don't see them. The Museum of Modern Art, why not? There are certainly great, great, great Mexican painters, of course, you know. Um, is it, and, and is it because the, the, the art is for the people at a sort of like um, subliminal level? Like, you know, that's why they don't charge so, so much for it, like 10000 35000 $100,000 for a painting, mm -hmm. you know. We see... German painters at the Museum of Modern it's Art with changed, big though. stuff and it's yeah, I don't know though, so I'm, because I mean that yeah. there's that whole thing about Frida Kahlo, right? Nobody was buying Frida Kahlo until Madonna did, 
And then really okay, I didn't know that. And then her prices zoomed up. I mean, certainly you look at Diego Rivera. There's a handful. Yeah. There's more than a couple of handfuls. But I'm talking yeah. about contemporary mm -hmm. Mexico. You know. Well, it's. Uh, uh, I remember being in New York during the '90s. Uh, mm -hmm. It was just two or three galleries that were open, really for Latin American artists. Right. So, and after Frida, the phenomenon of Frida they start getting more uh, really sensitive to the art that comes from Latin America. Mm -hmm. And the prices are uh, really, um, uh, in my view, reflect more the European influences in the United States than mm -hmm. the Latin American influences. You, know? yeah. you have the French that they are highly priced, uh, British, uh, and this has to be in relationship with this culture. Uh, it reflects that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Cool. Thank you for um, um, for saying that because it, it, it as a you know as as artists it's it's hard to keep going unless you produce a lot like Michael did and sell it for you know relatively. So affordable prices, you know. Um, so I, I think that's really great. You know? mm, mm. He but really thought art was not supposed to be so precious, but or so he he wanted it to be af affordable. He wanted anybody to be able to have it. What were you? No, thinking? I would say that the, probably the exception now is Frida, that her art is becoming such a boom. Uh, it's being constantly. Evolving in in terms of price, huh? Yeah. And uh, she was really uh, the exceptional woman in the Mexican culture. So that's yeah. why, and she always lived to the Diego shop. Huh? Mm -hmm. And now yeah. she's become really an icon. Yes, mm -hmm. and so many people do do portraits of her. You know? Yes, she was the original selfie. Yeah, I keep thinking that recently. Yeah. Self-portrait like Vincent Van Gogh. Mm -hmm. What about mm -hmm. um? What about this piece? Let's look at this for a second. Speaking of indigenous people, um, is that um, standing bear? What do you call? It? Do you it might know? be lone eagle. It might be red cloud. It might be. I'm not sure. I will say that Michael claimed to be a descendant of Geronimo. Though I asked his dad, and his dad didn't say that was. He said that wasn't exactly true. But he had Michael had strong ties to the native cultures. I, but I actually don't know who it is. Yeah, it's not stated on the back. Well, you know the um, <coughs> the Mexican um, um, actor Diego Luna. His I think his child is named Geronimo. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm, it's a part of go gossip. But yeah, you know, I, the, the indigenous people spanned. California and um, right and Mexico and so Oaxaca is like the 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 hub. The, yeah, I was lucky to have, have gone there. Really lucky. I really really love that place. Beautiful. But uh, yeah, so um, so that's another piece that are and let's look at one more and then we'll start talking about your work and let's see. Um, there is this one that enter full screen um, takes us to Dia de los Muertos. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a motorcycle in the back or? Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. That's kind of that's bicycle. Really cool. Low rider. <laughs> yeah, that's a, I think that's a drawing in the back that he turned into a screen and then he did it multiple times. So there's two of them, two different images. And then I think the middle one is a reproduction probably of something he found. Yeah, once again, that, that um, creating the depth with something else. Um, collaged in there. Yeah, I like the little images. Yeah. So fearless. So if you're looking for really cool Mexican art or 
art that is uh, the, you know, um, Chicano. Chicano nature. And, and, you know, you like the imagery. You want to you want to go to Day of the Dead on November 2nd, which is a Saturday this year. Yeah. So it should be fun. Should yeah, be so really we're fun. doing this. We're doing his closing on Halloween, weirdly, and we're showing Juan Fuentes, who's another fantastic artist. Oh, cool. Uh, Chicano at Alley Cat. He's having an opening with Leon Son on November 2nd. Great. During the whole procession, which should be a really, really fun time. Yeah, yeah, it should be the really good this year. Yeah, cool. So, let's see. Let's go to Two Shot. And um, now, you both, um, do you have separate studios? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but are they, uh, can you take a break and talk to like each other? Is it like a blue house with a walkway between? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're in two different places. We talk by te telepathy. <laughs> hey, bring me the red color. <laughs> you buy your own paint. Yes. You don't go shopping for paint together? Yes. Sometimes, uh, yeah, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> mostly. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, we have... Uh, different uh, approach to painting uh, uh, and the approaching of uh, Kate is um, she's a wonderful uh, artist and in terms of drawing animals and, and, and typewriters and uh, it's a, a lot of connotation of the typewriter with the books huh? and, and animals uh, beautiful horses and and goats and, mm -hmm. and that life size. reflects everything's got to be her. life size. <laughs> are they that? Are they huge? Or are they that? They're big? huge. Everything's life size. <laughs> oh, I didn't so get I that. So I love the idea of putting a life size goat in somebody's room, in their house, or a life size horse, <laughs> or the cats, or the dogs, or the goats, or the horses again. Always with the horses. Oh, I didn't know. And I, then I, do I looked at your website. And yeah, yeah, they're all they're all big. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, do you... I've been working in oil most recently, and I was doing acrylic for years and years mm -hmm. and years. Now I'm doing these funny little watercolors that my daughter says look like vaginas. She's 15. Oh, let's have a look at your flyer. So let's okay. have a... And then... She's in... One, is she in a San Francisco school? She's, um... She's at, she's at Berkeley High, actually. Oh, I see. And then Marco does this really, Marco, so my studio's out at Hunter's Point, and we share out there, and then, of course, always painting at home on the kitchen table. And then Marco has a um, studio at the hospital. Yeah, those are the vaginas up top. The, um, or as a friend of mine said, they're a bit sickly, but you can't really see the green, greenish nature of them there. And those are oil? These Water are watercolors. Oh, I've been doing this watercolor well. thing recently. I've been doing imagined botanicals, seeds and pods in the future and history, and it's all getting tangled up together in my mind, and then it's coming out with this beautiful pen that my delightful husband here bought me recently and showed me. He said, why don't you do watercolors? He says, look, it's really easy. He always carries a little watercolor kit in a sketch book in his bag. And, um, in fact, he meets a lot of people because they admire that. He's got this <laughs> leather bag from Mexico. But anyways. Well, you have it with you? Just yeah, of course. That. It's, a, it's, oh, generally, nice. it's generally attached to him. It's a really nice one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So all of that and the bookstores and this and that. But I want to say that Marco's a brilliant painter, and he was an art teacher and a professor for many years. He's lived in Mexico, of course, New mm -hmm. York. Spent time in Haiti, lived in Puerto Rico, lived in Atlanta, Florida, and now we are blessed with his presence here. And he invented, did I miss anywhere? <laughs> and then, maybe. It's okay. And then, and then he's, he stumbled on this really interesting technique of using what we call mud, which is really sheetrock mud, you know, that okay. you use for patching seams or whatnot, and he puts it on plywood or on canvas. He layers it all, and he presses shapes into it, and he sort of makes like a fresco. 
ish surface and then he uses oil pastels do you want to speak for yourself and he just, no, no, just jump in <laughs> he uses oil pastels and then he uses olive oil he goes and buys these tubs of olive oil from gross out on south bend s mm -hmm. and he creates an oil pastel that is pretty organic mm -hmm. he's not using the oil paints like some dopes do and he creates this incredible surface and he gets all these layers of color and it's completely fascinating. In fact, we just showed out at Hunter's Point and okay. he, um, there were some people very excited about his work. And we were just like, oh my God. It's great. Know? And he sold some major yeah. pieces. So nice. it's all, um, so he's like a lifer. He's a lifer, you know, <laughs> with really working well, it out with image and line and color and texture and the technique is a little bit, it's a mixed media technique. Oh, okay. The fresco technique is uh, it's mostly a mural. Oh, it's uh, been uh, in Italy, the Ravenna murals, and they were wonderful. And then Rivera brought that idea to Mexico, and he and he married this, the, the Mayans murals, or the technique of the um, indigenous people in Mexico with, with the Italians, uh, the Ravenna, and cool. he created his fresco, I mean fresco, r really, in, in, uh, uh, technically speaking, is what he does. So my is more, it's, it's a, little, a little bit more like a mixed media mm -hmm. because it's done in, in canvases. But okay. the idea is to create texture, and you can see in the invitation. And, uh, uh, and uh, it's mostly that. And where is it, Marshall? Is the, the watercolors, the, the, the watermelons. Oh, the watermelons. And it's cut it by half, huh? So you have the, the green eyes. So the designer uh, put it like that, huh? It's kind of collage, it's it. And the watermelons has been a uh, symbol in the Mexican painting. Painting, huh? Rivera yes. did a lot of watermelons, Tamayo, Frida, so all the Pico people. Sanchez. Hmm? Pico Sanchez, excuse me for interrupting. I want to just throw Pico, are good. Pico's name in there because, yeah, I mean, he has so many watermelons all the time was a motif. Yeah. All the time. He was a good friend of mine. Mm. Really? Mm. Oh. For a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it a local artist from here? He's, he was originally from uh, Mexico City. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry yeah. I didn't get to meet him. Yeah, mm. he was a very mm. funny guy, too. Mm. You knew him, mm. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, all the always sandia, you know. The yes, the watermelons is is a typical. Or is it sandia? Sandia, sandia. Yes. Sandia. Yeah. Um, and uh, um, and well, my paintings are just uh, uh, reflecting uh, uh, skate paintings, reflecting our personalities, sure. and we create symbols. Uh, like uh, Borges say that the aim of the painter is to translate reality into into symbols, oh? and yeah. the symbol of the watch and the symbol of the crow. So those are the personal uh, symbols that are recurring in my paintings and K paintings. Picasso did the same, mm -hmm. Matisse, all the big guys did the same. So yeah, yeah so create symbols is. The, we're the we're the little we're the little guys. They're the big guys. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, but you guys are showing this weekend, and they're not. So, yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. Well, so yeah. let's look at it again. It says uh, reception Friday, October twenty fifth, from seven to nine. And is that going? And it gives the location there in the bottom left, but we can't read it because the lower thirds. Thirty seven fifty one. Right, I did it wrong. 2751 23rd Street. It's a new little pop up gallery studio space that my good friend Jim Burnett invited us to participate. He's a brilliant photographer. Huh. And so it's going to be the three of us Jim Burnett and me and Marco. And we're going to be there Saturday and Sunday as well, October 26th and 27th from 11 to 6 okay. each day. And we're doing a party that Friday night, Can, the 25th. Um, the audience, um, can we um, uh, Google? Can can they Google it somehow? Uh, it's listed on Mission Artists United and on mm -hmm. ArtSpan. It's part of the ArtSpan Open Studios Third okay. Weekend Mission District. 
Okay. So yeah, we're okay. findable, as it yeah. were. Artsban. Artsban is throughout the mission. They're throughout the city. They're throughout the city. Okay. They do. Uh, four different weekends. We started at Hunters Point. Mm-hmm. Two weekends ago. This last weekend, I don't remember where it was. This weekend is the Mission, okay. Bernal, Noe Valley. Oh. Uh, 1890 Bryant is participating this weekend, I believe. And then it goes on. Maybe there's four weekends total. Oh, so is there's there a one big more weekend group. after this? I think so. There's a big oh. group show at Somart's right now. Okay. Concurrent with the Rooms for the Dead that Renee Yanez, now his son, Rio Yanez, and Carolina. 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 Quintana. Are co-curating, uh-huh. and there's a black light black light room that Mike Dingle is doing with actually a bunch of Michael Roman in there, just to say uh-huh. Michael Roman. But the Somart, so there's a huge exhibition. We have two pieces there, and you get to see everything that's being exhibited through the through the month at these different locations. So okay. that's a good place to go and look. Yeah, and that's, that's open every day on. Um, what street? Somewhere it's at Brandon, Brandon and that's right. 12th, 11th, and then the Dia, the Rooms for the Dead, is literally right next door, also in Somarts. So that's a brilliant, brilliant exhibition, as I was just saying, and that opened just a week ago. Okay. And you can go anytime during the day. They're both free. You can go wander. That's really yeah. lovely. Yeah. No, I've shown there a, a couple times, and I mm-hmm. modeled for, for Renee. Oh, nice. As a, um, as a dead person. For uh, uh, Day of the Dead, uh, back in 2002. Renee. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's another person that um, we've, we've lost in the mission community of artists. But that's okay. I mean, it's good that Rio, I, I met Rio. I need to, to get over there. I haven't been to that, mm. ga- that gallery space in a while. Mm. But um, we've got like about three minutes to the show. So what do we want to talk about for our for the next three minutes. We, we don't have anybody calling today because we're not live. <laughs> That's fair enough. That's yeah. fair enough. But you have to come on and do a live show and we can show actually show your work. So. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, the live shows are fun because people will call up and you can have your friends call up and ask you a question that I don't ask, you know, <laughs> that I forget to ask or something. It's all good. Well, I think this is a really fun time of the year here in San Francisco because there's so much great art happening yeah. and so many great exhibitions happening right now. And certainly the mission where we spend a lot of time mm-hmm. at Alley Cat is, I mean, we've got street festivals all the time, but nothing beats November 2nd. I mean, it is going to be packed and full yeah, bet, of everybody huh? doing everything. Yeah. Yeah, um, and the fact that uh, Kate has been... Uh, uh, very generous with the alley cat and we try to create that uh, free space or space for where the two most the two communities the American community and the Mexican community and more communities can can show uh, cultural th- events together oh, so we don't uh, charge for people f- to, to do poetry readings we have a square dance once a month um, there's a lot of book releases. We Poetry. have monthly art exhibits. We do all kinds of all kinds of things there. At photography Alley Cat. at yeah. Alley Cat, yeah. And the gallery is also focused on bringing more female minorities to oh, show great. it. So, because I we believe that they are underrepresented. So in. We put that emphasis. Uh, is we are in the process of becoming a little bit better with matching or balancing the whole concept. But uh, it's, it's, it, that is the aim. You know, that's how it right, that is the aim. And this is probably a good moment for me to plug the fact that we have found we've just started a Patreon fundraising for Alley Cat since all the event and programming is free. And on our website, we're asking, it's a very small ask. It's $1 a month, $3 a month, $5 a month monthly membership to keep us going to sustain us. Okay, sounds fair. This programming, so. Sounds great. I Actually, figure we're all in it together. Absolutely. That's my philosophy. Oh, yeah. Planically is for that all the way. Um, but we have to say goodbye. We're, we're done. <laughs> so. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.
Okay, thanks for watching Planet Glee. Go see art, support artists, please. Bye. Say bon voyage.